generally, when I look at the year that's gone by, um, there, there are good points and bad points, and I think I'll start with the good points first. Um, Pre-SHS. Yes, it was fraught, the implementation may have been fraught with challenges, and the jury is still out as to whether quantity of education versus quality of education is the right move. But overall, I believe it's a major step in the right direction. Um, no society in the world has ever developed or progressed without investing heavily in the education of its people. And at, I believe at the secondary level is the minimum stage where you can create a critical mass of anal anal analytical thinkers who in future will be able to comment knowledgeably on issues of governance and also will vote wisely on issues, not on tribal or religious or political issues. Um, another good thing was the fight against illegal mining. I believe that the strong, decisive stance taken by the sector minister sent out a clear message that the sanctity of human life and protection of the environment far overweighs short-term economic gains. And that was very positive. Yes, there are long-term negative repercussions such as unemployment, but I think those can be addressed. And overall, I think it was a very good move. Um, like most of the speakers before me, last night's breaking news of Martin Amidou being appointed as a special prosecutor was really good news to me. Um, it is clear that he's independent-minded, and his past track record has shown that he's not swayed by partisanship. And that is what we need. And for me, that is a very clear signal that the president is intent on tackling corruption head-on. Um, also, the president's vision of Ghana beyond aid, it may be difficult to achieve, but I believe it's something we must truly work towards. Um, Africans can and, manage, can and should manage their own affairs, and this is, this is not news, but now we must work towards it. Unfortunately, there is bad news, and I think that the firm stance that was displayed during the fight against illegal mining should have been applied equally, or even more severely, to the acts of hooliganism by party activists. And the, their, their impunity and their flagrant dis disregard for authority sends a very, very dangerous message out there, and I truly hope that this is something that will not be repeated in the new, new, new government. Secondly, the appointment of an unprecedented number of ministers, I mean 110 of them, uh, makes no sense to me. And I believe that that probably was a single decision that woke up a lot of citizens and made them believe that they must pay closer attention to what their government is doing. Despite the President's assurances that more hands on deck would make for light work and faster, in my opinion, the opposite seems to be true. Uh, we are unable to truly track what each minister is doing, um, only a few have been commended, and I think that is something that has to be addressed. It, it made me very sad, to be, to be honest. Gender. Now, this is a subject that's very clear to my heart. I'm not going to go into statistics and figures. I'm just going to be very general about it. Um, the president shows signs of commitment to gender representation and gender issues by appointing more women than probably normal to high-ranking um, decision-making positions. But we are yet to see any of these translate into concrete action. And we still have terrible issues of gender-based violence. We have, poor, I don't even know how to describe it, terrible reporting measures for gender-based violence, the handling of it, even in the media. It's, a, it's an area of deep concern for us. And I feel that the gender ministry should be empowered. Also, places, institutions like Dobsu must be resourced and they must be strengthened to be able to tackle this particular problem very well. And uh, social inclusion, I'm not personally aware of any major policy implementations concerning persons living with disabilities. I do stand to be corrected, but for me it's disappointing that, that more hasn't been done in that area. Um, my recommendations are that the president must lead by example. He must be bold. He must be bold to take the difficult decisions because his vision for better Ghana is one we all share, and it's not going to be achieved without a lot of hard work and a lot of stepping on toes. Overall, um, above all, he must ensure that national priorities are placed above those of political priorities, and national interests must definitely be placed up upon above party interests. Sector ministers must be compelled to deliver on their mandates. They must have time frames. We must be able to monitor them, see what they're achieving, too, too often they come, they serve their term, they go, we don't know what they've achieved, and it's repeated. In countries like Australia, they have measurable outcomes and KPIs too, and I don't see why we can't have that here. 
Um, corruption, a lot has been said about corruption, and the special prosecutor will help, but he's not the only solution. There's a lot of endemic corruption in the public service institutions at the lowest levels. There's no reason why citizens should go to obtain a service that they're entitled to as a, as a taxpayer, and yet have to pay monetary gifts. It's become part and parcel of dealing with the public sector, and it's wrong, it's very wrong. They must be strengthened. I believe the client, the client service charter should be boldly displayed. You should be able to walk into any public government agency and know what it will take to get your service, how much you will pay for it, and the length of time. You must stop this petty, petty corruption because it's not, we pay more attention to the high level corruption in the government, but that endemic corruption, your day to day activities and interaction with public that has to be eliminated. Um, basically, I conclude that I remain hopeful that the government, it hasn't been as impressive as I hoped, but then again, I believe we all had, I definitely had high expectations, which I didn't manage properly. But it's one year down. <laughs> the time for overlooking everything is past. We are going to be watching them for the next two years. After the fourth year, you and I know it's going to be a campaign. campaign. We will watch them closely. We will speak up. And they need to realize that citizens are led and wide awake. And we will not allow them to get away with things that previous governments have probably been able to get away with. And elections will be won, I believe, in future on issues, more issues. I believe citizens have woken up to their responsibilities, that they do have the power to vote. Incumbency has been shown, never, it's, not, it's no protection. You can lose. So that is my main thing. I also, I have been hoping for better communication for, from this government. And this, this we now are, we are in a new era. Information flow happens in real time. One tweet can travel the globe in seconds, and it reaches millions. The same with a viral video. They have to jealously guard the information and share it at the level that everyone can, can identify with, everyone can hear, so that we don't depend on fake news, on rumors, on, you know, communication must be clear, it must be concise, and I want to be constant. And uh, in the meantime, we the citizens will continue to play our part uh, by keeping the government as accountable as we can and keeping them on our toes.